uh, attest to that. Well, Craig, I'll let you speak for yourself, but I know for me, uh, the process I will share with you guys over the next few weeks has been uh, such a, it's been pivotal for me in terms of uh, just figuring out how to, you know, <laughs> struggling and failing and trying to figure out how to create the life that just makes me happy brings a uh, happiness and fulfillment uh, into my life and it's you know it hasn't been easy but uh, uh this the what's really um i think what uh, we hope anyway for the, over the next few weeks is that this uh, we give you some strategies that helps get you on the right and get you on a path to bring more happiness into your life so craig i hope i didn't steal any of your thunder there but uh, i just wanted to start there because i i just right. i have so much gratitude all for done. <laughs> what's that <laughs> No, truthfully, uh, I was going to share a bit of an anecdote is that uh, probably about 10 years ago, I got introduced to a lot of the content that we're going to share in this webinar this week and actually for this month. And one of the most profound things for me was the development of a consciousness in my thought processes that for the first time in my life allowed me to understand exactly what it is that inside my own mind, my own heart, my own thoughts and feelings is what I wanted out of my own life. And what I mean by that is that oftentimes what we have is a situation where we've adopted the belief systems and um, try to live up to a life that has maybe been externally driven to us by our teachers, preachers, peers, and, and um, you know, friends people that have started to weigh their belief systems onto us that we start to accumulate and we start to live our lives in a certain way of what we think is supposed to happen. But the challenge there is we become really unhappy or we become frustrated or perpetually delusional. Like, you know, you, we just, we start to have a real challenge navigating our own lives because we're trying to live up to someone else's expectations or someone else's version of us if that makes sense. And what is terrific about this whole thing, and I think you're all going to find this really refreshing, is that we're actually going to show you how you can start to look at the decisions that you make, how you make choices, why you make the choices that you do, and how you can start to work through some of the things that you feel like you want to, to correct within your own thought processes. And it's revolutionary because I think, honestly, if we started to teach children and teenagers this stuff, I think we would have better self-esteem. I think we would have better conscious living, um, more compassion and empathy for other people. I think we would just see a really terrific change in people's thought processes simply because they started to understand themselves better. So all that to pre-frame for the next three or four weeks, I think we're really going to enjoy this. Um, you know, this is not a method of like, you have to think a certain way. This is actually very internally driven. And I hope I get that across in my little monologue here, but you're going to go through a series of little exercises that help you to understand yourself better. You can do this with a partner or a spouse so that they can understand themselves better and you can understand why they communicate a certain way and why they do certain things and how the connection of relationships becomes uh, complementary instead of and corroborative instead of um, competitive, if that makes sense. So there's lots in here, but I think as we navigate through today, uh, you're going to get a really good foundation, and I think it's going to get you excited for what's going to come in in the next couple of weeks. How's that, John? Is that all right? Did I lose John. All right, I'll, I'll assume I lost John. So the first thing we're going to talk about today is, again, just that concept is like, are you happy? You know, one of the things that we're seeing in our society is that quite a few people are living their lives, but they're not super happy. They're not super fulfilled. They're not super engaged. I mean, personally, taking care of patients for the last 15 years, I meet lots of folks from all different walks of life. And I see people that have maybe committed to doing a job that maybe they're not happy with because it doesn't fulfill them. And I'll give you another anecdote is years ago, I had a patient, she was in a, um, uh, in, in a position that she wasn't really too happy with. And I could see that it was weighing on her and consistently, honestly, like we would go through the, the scan process and we could see that there was still some really deep rooted stress within her nervous system that just, we couldn't seem to shake, right? We were getting really good changes in a lot of other aspects, but 
in this certain aspect, she was really struggling. And so I finally just asked her, I said, like, are you happy with what you're doing? And she said, no, I've never really liked my job. I, I, and I, you know, it pays the bills, but it doesn't really fulfill me. And so I asked her, I said, what would fulfill you? And she said, I'd really love to train fitness. Like I'd love to teach people fitness. I'd love to train people fitness. Um, I said, well, what's stopping you? She's like, well, it's the money. Like I, you know, I don't know if I'm going to make as much money as I would in this job. And I said, well, I'll argue that I know a lot of personal trainers that are making probably twice as much as you are in your position given and that, and just working in the fitness industry. So little by little, she actually started to teach two or three classes a week at night. And uh, over about the span of a year and a half, she actually had developed her business such that she was really starting to get energized. And it was getting to the point where she could almost offset the role that she had in her, um, you know, her day job kind of thing. So all that to say is that the difference though is that it dramatically changed her health outcomes because she started to become more fulfilled. She was living a purpose and it was fulfilling to her. So as we go through this, I mean, one of the staggering stats here is, you know, many men and many women suffer from depression in their lives and we're seeing more of it. I mean, obviously with COVID and some of the other things, we're starting to see the effects of anxiety and depression and uh, uh, just emotional turmoil that it's starting to create with people's lives. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, 5% of children and 12% of girls. I mean, this is our age category. I've been, I haven't actually updated these stats in a while and I should, I would hazard to say that even more of these kids are seeing higher levels of depression. I know anxiety. It's like one in four kids is now exhibiting anxiety. Um, you know, it's a real concern, especially when we're coming out of this worldwide pandemic. Unhappy employees outnumber the happy, or sorry, unhappy employees outnumber the happy ones by two to one worldwide. Uh, unfortunately, 40% of marriages don't make it to that 30th anniversary. Um, there's some pretty staggering statistics in terms of how our relationships are being cultivated and how they're, they're you know, their longevity, if you will. You know, as we have always talked here in the office, we believe that every human being is designed to be extraordinary. From the time that you're born and those two cells that came together that made one and then formed two and then four and then eight and then 16 and so on, you became you from two separate individual cells that made the skin on your hands and, and your hair and your eyes and who you are. It's an extraordinary event, this thing called life, where we actually are formed, but then we believe that you have an extraordinary purpose in each and every way. And that doesn't mean that you're going to be the next prime minister or the next NHL hockey player, but you can be extraordinary in every single way. And we see that extraordinary individual in front of us every single time when we, when we look at them. So, you know, we have this situation where if we have this unbelievable, fantastic body that knows how to heal and knows how to function and knows how to breathe and knows how to beat its heart and knows how to do all these incredible things. Well, then how come we're so sick and how come we're so unhappy given the fact that we've got all this fantastic elements about us. And what I would say is that a lot of times when it comes to our unhappiness, it's again, because we're not really sure what exactly values and matters most to us. We don't really understand ourselves and our purpose. And so over the next couple of weeks, we want to help you to understand exactly maybe what is your purpose and how can you start to, uh, navigate life with that understanding which then lifts up your happiness and lifts up your ability to enjoy life and as we always say there's you know if we're unhappy and, and why are we so sick i mean a lot of times we talk about the requirements to express health and we see our plant here our flower you know what are the the requirements for a healthy plant right we've got sunlight water and nutrition soil Okay, so those three elements are vitally important for a flower to express itself at the fullest, highest potential that it can. And the same thing happens with uh, our bodies. There's certain requirements that we need to fulfill in order to express health. If we don't fulfill them in the highest requirements, then we get, um, you know, maybe we get toxicity or we get insufficiency. Um, like a, a radical example would be an insufficiency of vitamin C can start to create scurvy, right? That's an insufficiency of a certain requirement that we need. Another requirement would be social connection, 
my goodness. Right now, these electronic devices that allow us to connect with people is still better than nothing, but boy, oh boy, does face-to-face -face where you can see and feel and you can hear someone and you can um, see their body language when they're speaking with you has such a much more dramatic effect and it's a requirement for our brains to express health in our thought processes. Uh, physical, like we talk about, uh, uh, you know, the eat by design, we've got to provide the body with good nutrition. We've got to make sure that it's got the building blocks that it needs so that your cells can start to form and become strong and and thriving so that you express health and vitality, right? So I always say like, you can make new cells for your eyes by drinking a can of Coca-Cola. And that's pretty incredible, that's extraordinary. But wouldn't it be better if we ate broccoli and chicken so that we could actually provide some better building blocks to make those cells? And so if we look at a, you know, a continuum over time, if we keep, continue to provide uh, good quality, uh, uh, deliverable nutrients within our bodies and we make choices and decisions that moves us closer to health and further away from symptom sickness and disease so how we eat has a profound effect how we move our bodies we've got to move our bodies we've talked about that last month uh, we have to get have good neurological function within our movements uh, we have to have good neurological function within our spine and nervous system hence why you know, people don't need chiropractic. What they need is a proper functioning spine and nervous system, and chiropractic provides that and allows them to fulfill that need and that requirement. Uh, and of course, the think by design, how our conscious thoughts, our purpose, our sense of fulfillment, our happiness, how is that shape and develop our ability to have a good, healthy, strong mind to make decisions? And the cool part about all of this is if any of you are struggling with anxiety or trepidation or um, you know challenge with making decisions when you understand yourself and your values at the highest level you start to filter the world around you and you start to guard your mind so much better than you ever imagined and with that i'm going to lead into dr john because he's going to take over and he's actually going to walk you through the values exercise so if you have that sheet of paper that we sent you, I want you to pull that out right now because we're going to actually do this in real time and we're going to walk you through it. Of course, I didn't mention this at the beginning. I'm not sure if Dr. John did, but if you have questions, if you have comments, if you have uh, things you want to add, just go ahead and add those in the chat box. We are going to open things up here in a minute for some questions, but over the course of the next couple of minutes, we're going to take some quiet time. We're going to go through this little exercise this is going to be pretty dramatic. This is going to be pretty awesome. Okay. So, Dr. <laughs> ready? Love it. Just um, mic check here. You can hear me okay, Craig? I can. Okay, perfect. Just because I dropped out there for a moment. So, um, I actually just uh, want to just back up one step because Craig just uh, triggered a, a great metaphor um, that uh, we often share and think by design. And when he's talking about, you know, strengthening your mind, um, T taking time to kind of dig into uh, the maybe some unconscious beliefs that are driving your actions. We're, we're going to talk about that. A, a good way to think about this, we're all familiar, especially right now, with your immune system. You know that um, your immune system is the, the part of your body that is responsible for protecting you from like outside assaults. So whether it's bacteria or viruses or, you know, you cut yourself, um, even all the, the healing and repair that happens internally, uh, that is all driven by your immune system. And the strength of your immune system is directly correlated with your overall health and longevity, right? So the stronger your immune system is, the longer you're going to live and the, the quality of your life is going to be better. Um, and there's actually, there's no such thing. No one would ever argue that it, there's too much immune system, like that, that you can have a too strong immune system or like a too, like a, your immune system can get like too healthy. <laughs> um, it, you know, we're always striving to just get it, make it uh, better, better, more adaptable to your environment. That's what a healthy immune system is. Well, in the same way, we want to create a mind that has the same kind of protection against invading, but instead of like viruses and bacteria, we want to have, create a, a, a mind that's um, protected against invading like negative thoughts and emotions and, and uh, externalize, like Craig was talking about, all those thoughts and um, beliefs that get imposed on us. Um, 
we, the, I look at Think by Design as a, a, a great strategy to strengthen your mind so that you're uh, more impervious to those uh, uh, infecting thoughts, the negative infecting thoughts. So this exercise is actually a, a great first step. And some of it, you know, if you've done any amount of uh, self-help work uh, that you may have done this type of exercise before, uh, if that's the case, I have a suggestion right now uh, is that forget what you did before. I'm not saying it wasn't valuable. I'm not saying that it's, uh, uh, it, it wasn't helpful. Of course, it, uh, it led you to where you are today. But the best place to start for learning is to forget what you know for now. Right? That, that opens up your mind. It allows you to be mo a bit more curious. So if you've done an exercise like this before, um, it's uh, you know, it, it'd be easy to think like, oh, okay, I, you know, I've done this before. I already know what my values are. You know, start with a blank blank sheet and uh, and and just go through the exercise again and see maybe some different things will come up. So uh, a value is uh, by definition a value is something that you wish to gain or keep. Uh, it's something that is important to you uh, and it's uh, as uh, uh, compared to other things. So you, we could say that um, values are like by nature kind of hierarchical. There's like a kind of order to them and. Uh, this what I what I a great way to kind of conceptualize why it's important to know your values is uh, I think we have a picture of a doorman here. Is that next, Craig? Uh, a couple yeah. of slides. Up. Yeah, give me a sec. Okay. Well, I want you guys to imagine um, having a doorman that is at the uh, at the doorway of your mind. So he's at the the gates of your mind, and he's holding a list. Right, just like you're trying to get into the most exclusive club uh, in your city, and that doorman has a list of the people that are allowed in. And if you're not on that list, then you're probably not getting in, right? Um, I want you to imagine having a list of your values, and this doorman, big burly doorman, is standing um, at the gates of your mind, and it, and it's looking and saying, okay, does this, you know, when you get presented with an opportunity, or uh, maybe it's a, uh, you know, even just an idea that someone uh, shares with you a, a different opinion. Um, maybe it's a, you know, a person, a relationship. Uh, I would imagine that the doorman standing there and it's evaluating the, the opportunity, the person, the idea based on this filter. Does it match my values? Does it fit into my values? Um, is this something that's going to amplify a value or is it something that's going to take away from something that I value? So that's, I, I just, I love that idea. I kind of, I, myself, I kind of have a, a, like an actual visual, I can visualize my doorman. And, and I know that when I'm living uh, on purpose or in alignment with my values, that guy's really big and strong. And then other times when I'm, you know, usually it's when I discover that I've, you know, I'm not so happy or I'm not feeling fulfilled or maybe I'm, uh, you know, I feel like I've gone off track. I can kind of see that that doorman's taking a break. <laughs> he's, he's allowed some things into my life that don't align. So kind of with that frame in mind. Can, oh. can I jump in there with one little, again, like anecdote, but it's, it's more like the purpose of the bar of the, the big bad bouncer is to keep certain people and things out of your life. And that's what your values are. They're the filter to determine who gets in and who doesn't. Cause I'll, how many of you have, uh, let somebody into your life because they slipped past your value system and now it's really hard and difficult to get them out of your life right and it's painful it um now family excluded because family gets an automatic free pass to get in the club so um but if we've ever you had a, a client a um taking a job that you know maybe get kind of fit the bill enough for you to say yes to but then you kind of get inside you realize this isn't the club for you anymore um it can be really challenging and painful and you know it can be anything from financially painful it can be emotionally painful it can be um you know any of the above to because it got past your value system at the front door so when you start to develop this whole value system and you you screen you pre-screen all these folks and people and opportunities life gets a whole lot simpler you learn to say no more and yes less yeah that's a great uh, a, a great action point that comes out of this is 
knowing, being more confident in saying no. Uh, and that's definitely something I've, I've, that's benefited me with doing this. So if you look at the, I have the sheet pulled up on a different screen here, so I'm looking off the screen, but the, the goal here is to um, identify words that resonate with you. So the first step is just to run through this. And this is the, the step that we're going to do together right now. I'm going to give you guys two minutes. And I don't want you to think too much. I just want you to, you know, literally let your eyes scan over and with a highlighter or with a, uh, maybe it's a, if you're doing it digitally um, uh, on a PDF, you're just kind of putting a check mark uh, beside the words that jump out at you. And, and you know what, you may find that like half of the words are going to resonate with you. Um, that's okay. So at the start, it really is just about going through it first. And then the next step is to start to pare them down. Um, some words will be similar. So you'll be able to choose one over the other, or maybe come up with a, like an alternative word that captures a bit of a broader concept or, or uh, uh, virtue. Yep. The, um, and then, so actually what we'll start there and then I'll, I'll walk through the second step. So what I want everyone to do take, I'm going to actually set a timer here because we are running out of time. So, um, I'm going to set a timer for one minute. Okay. And, uh, so everyone's going to go until you hear the timer. I may even find some music here and you're just running through the list and identifying the words that just jump out at you that you're like, yeah, this describes me. This is something that is important to me. Go. Okay, that was 60 seconds. Not nearly enough time to do this whole exercise, but I just wanted to get you guys started, kind of wet, wet the whistle. Um, but the, the purpose now, um, let's say you take another two or three minutes at the end of this call. So right be before you jump into anything else, you go through and you finish that first pass. The second step is to uh, now go back through the words that you've selected and I'll give you an example, like, um, you know, for me, I selected fitness and health. Like those are obviously two, well, not I should say, obviously, to me, those are, are high values. Health is actually my highest value. Um, and fitness, it, they're kind of the same, like I actually consider fitness a sub genre, a subsection of health. So I don't need both of those in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually choose health as the, as the overarching one. Um, another one that uh, I, uh, I wanted to actually just make a quick comment on like a family. So probably for most of you on this call, family is a, a high value and maybe it's not, but uh, and no judgment there. It's up to you to decide. I actually disagree with what Craig said before. Family does not get a free pass <laughs> unless they're your children. Um, but any other family, I think they should get, uh, they should. You're born into a family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they're, uh, they should go through the exact same filter as uh, anyone else. Uh, but that's it. We'll save that for another uh, podcast, Kevin. Um, but I think family is actually a, a good one personally. So I just wanted to share this uh, because it, if you um, consider your values now compared to say 10 years ago, 20 years ago, or maybe 10 years from now, they, they'll likely change a little bit. Uh, and so uh, for me, um, 10 years ago, family actually was a pretty low value. I wouldn't even say it wouldn't have met my top five for sure. Um, I, at that point, did not want to have kids. Uh, I, I wasn't that close with my uh, nuclear family. My parents were off uh, traveling. You know, it's like, so it just wasn't a high value for me. Um, and fast forward five years ago, I, you know, had a big transformation, uh, or maybe six years ago, and I realized that I actually wanted to have kids, and it became like a really, I thought about it a lot. I applied 
the principles that we'll teach and think by design, I realized that like, actually, I really want to have a family. And all of a sudden family went from like, not on my list to being one of the top ones. Uh, and uh, to kind of wrap all this up with the doorman, uh, it turns out that my, my uh, wife at the time, uh, she still retained that previous uh, you know, it, um, <laughs> the thing that we'd agreed on before, she also didn't want to have kids at that time, uh, but she didn't change. And so now we have this major contradiction uh, in, in uh, values, incongruency. Uh, I'm saying I want to have a family, she's saying she doesn't. And what do you guess, <laughs> guess what happened, right? <laughs> that, that relationship uh, had, was, I won't say destroyed because it was, uh, we were very respectful to each other, but it was, uh, it ended, right? And, that, and that's simply as a result of applying um, the, uh, you know, being willing to be respectful to my own wishes and also to uh, use the doorman principle to realize like, okay, if this is what I want, if this is really important to me, I really need to change my actions and behaviors and align them with the things that I say I want. So um, that's actually, so once you go through and, and, and you pare the list down, we're aiming for, you know, let's say 10. I think a 10 is a good number. Uh, and you, uh, would, it doesn't have to be words on this sheet. Obviously, you can choose other words. Um, and then when you have those list of 10, now the, the fun part starts, I think, because you get to start to think about what does that word actually mean to you? Define it in your own terms. Uh, put it um, in, in, uh, in, set, in kind of sentence structure, like, you know, family to me is, uh, you, know, um, you know, showing up at, at home uh, every night with, um, having my wife and daughter greet me at the door, uh, it brings me great joy and fulfillment. Um, the, uh, so you can, you can define it in whatever way it makes sense to you. Some of these words might actually be helpful to go to the, you know, go to the dictionary, go online, look up the actual appropriate definition. Um, and then but the, with that, as you start to think about what the word means to you, um, what the value actually is, then put it into action. So I choose to, in this case, I will use the run with the family. Um, you know, I, I choose family as one of my highest values. Therefore, um, I, it, you know, I hold my commitments, um, with my wife when it comes to childcare, you know, like there's, so then, now we start to actually apply, how do we use this kind of like pretty abstract idea of having a list of values and making it real concrete. So those, I guess there's three steps. So I'll summarize. So one is go through the list, first pass, second pass, you're paring it down. Ultimately, you're trying to get to a list of around 10, and then you're going to define it in your own words, and then you're going to put it into action. So you're going to, you're going to uh, describe how you uh, act out that value or how do your actions lead you to uh, achieving that value. Craig, before we... Um, Close there. Is there, did you have any uh, insights into how you apply this exercise? Uh, <clears throat> uh, just like you had said, the other thing I do is I take this values list and I might sit on it for a week or so and I'll start to ask myself where and what situations do I exhibit this value as a high priority? Um, <clears throat> So for one of my highest values is actually freedom. Um, and I'll sit and ponder on how I try to allow people freedom, freedom of choice, freedom of decision, freedom of, of uh, to be able to, to do and learn for themselves. Um, another one is excellence. So where do I exhibit excellence or how do I exhibit excellence? What uh, how, you know, even at the end of the day, I might reflect on my day and say, where did I exhibit excellence today? Or how did I exhibit excellence? Or where did I not? So I can call myself to the carpet when in fact I was outside of my, um, outside of myself. So, um, you know, the process of going through this it is like Dr. John said, it may change because if health is your high priority, but then you have a loved one that's maybe ill, Oftentimes, we will actually push health down in priority and elevate, you know, care or um, uh, empathy or compassion for that individual that maybe is um, struggling with a health concern, right? Uh, I saw it with my own mother when she passed away. I mean, health is a high priority for me. 
and I started to eat things that I don't normally do, and I started to, to neglect my, my own health in favor of more, spending more time with her. Um, so, you know, these things will shift in priority, and that's okay. It's okay to understand that, and it's okay that life will come at you in different ways, and you are going to readjust your priorities and your hier hierarchies. And that's how people make decisions too. And that's kind of one of the frustrating things that can happen in relationships. Because when you can start to understand someone else's values, like when I understand John's values and he understands mine, and as close to friends as we are, he can actually call me out on something and say, well, that doesn't really fit your values from what I understand. You may want to go back and check why you made that decision. Um, or you might be outside of your values. And that's one of the cool things with an accountability system is that sometimes you can't see your own blind spots um, and things start to sneak past your doorman and you've got maybe a you know a, a brother in arms or a sister or someone who's there as an accountability that can say hey you know what you might want to check on that because that one isn't your high priority and isn't a high value for you and so you can have a, a really good robust conversation about a lot of those things when you understand each other's and when you understand their values. It's, it's one of the coolest things. I've, been, I've gone through this with my own wife and I understand her values. So now I can communicate to her better because I can speak to her values. Family and children are one of her highest values. And so if I can help to fulfill her values, she's ready to pour into my values because her bucket is full. And that's kind of how this whole thing plays out is that we start to learn how um, to nurture and build relationships within ourselves and within the people around us. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, getting to the end uh, of the time today. So I, I thought just at this stage, if anyone has any questions, um, you're welcome to uh, put your hand up. There's a little uh, action that you can use uh, to uh, raise your hand or you can, enter it in to the uh, chat box. We have uh, just, I think we've got about three to five minutes here. So uh, if there's any questions relating specifically to this uh, exercise or uh, to uh, the, the broader topic of Think By Design, feel free to put it there. Um, while we're waiting, um, next, uh, next week, Craig, are we in next week or is it the following? Uh, not next week, the week after. Week after, that's right, the third, 23rd. So that we'll skip next week. The 20, uh, Thursday, the 23rd, will be our next session. And that on that session, we're actually going to jump into uh, four crucial questions. So these are uh, questions that will uh, certainly change my life. But these are great questions to think through any, uh, any problem, uh, any area of your life that perhaps you want to uh, improve, improve upon. And uh, oh, we've actually, I was... Craig has um, shown you, so now I, I don't even get to hold you in suspense. <laughs> the four questions, what do you believe, what do you want, why do you want it, and then what actions are you willing to take? Uh, simple questions, but profound in terms of their uh, application. Uh, and we're actually going to go through an example of how to use these to, uh, I'm guessing that all of us at least have health somewhere in our hierarchy of values. Uh, whether it's your top one or not, I'm not sure. Like that's up to you to decide. But it's certainly, uh, you know, you're on this call, so you obviously value your health. So um, we're going to use health as an example to walk you through how to apply these core questions so that you can understand yourself better, know what you want, and then figure out how to actually achieve that. Yeah, so the reason why I want to bring this up is, is simply because I want all of you to go through the values exercise, and hopefully you've got your top three uh, three to five is usually what I like to strive for, um, for next week. And if you can circle the one that you think is one of your highest values majority of the time, that's awesome. And then what we're going to do is, as John said, we're going to take these four key questions and we're going to help you to go through, uh, an individual topic and work your way through answering some of these key questions. And then you're going to use not only your values, but you're going to start to test why do you think the way that you do and is that true? And then you can ask yourself, like I was just saying, when is it true? When is it not true? Um, and really try to test yourself. And this is the cool part with a little bit of heavy lifting, right? In the mental aspect, 
but we want to make this a really enjoyable thing so that you can start to really kind of dive in and understand yourself a whole lot better. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't see any questions. Hopefully those, if uh, that was helpful in terms of um, content and clarity, just maybe pop in the chat thing and just let us know, say that's great or I'm good or that would be awesome because that way we can get some feedback. Mm -hmm. But um, the biggest thing is we want you to kind of go through this values process today and just understand things uh, to start off. So. I don't see any questions there, but yeah. Very good, Craig. Well, I think we should uh, close this off then. Um, we are recording this, so we will be sending it out uh, to everyone on the call. And then uh, there's several that have, uh, were unable to make it. So uh, that'll be, uh, you'll receive an email from each of us. Yep. Uh, and uh, yeah. thank you, Christine and Claudia. Appreciate yeah. it. And Karen. Thank you. And uh, so yes, we're skipping next week, but the following week uh, we'll be back and you'll receive, uh, you'll see an email in your inbox on the Monday before uh, and just, you know, let us know you want in and we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, yes, Bonnie, we will be kind of expanding on that doorman principle. Yes. Okay. Great. Have a wonderful day, folks. Stay cool. Drink lots of water. Do your exercises. Don't forget your mobility. That's right. Okay. See ya. See you soon.